Hi, my name is Alex Feisley, and today I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of how failover works in NetMaker EE. This is a new feature as of version 0.16.1 and applies only to the Enterprise Edition of NetMaker. For those of you unfamiliar, you can actually set up a free tier of NetMaker EE with a free license, which you can go ahead and create at any time. And I'll provide some instructions for how to do that in the description. So what is failover? You can see this new column here for creating failover, but what actually do you do with it? So basically, all of the nodes in our network have peer-to-peer -peer connections right now, which means from my machine, I can ping any other machine in the network. So let's take a look at that. Here's our network, and let's make sure we can ping. So I'm pinging the server here. Here's another machine over here. That's a dot four. Okay, and then we have this dot three here. So I can ping each of those machines directly. But what happens if one of these machines is unreachable? So if I were to cut off direct access to say this machine here, it becomes unreachable and I can't ping it. That's where the failover machine comes in. There's a lot of scenarios in which this might occur, such as being stuck behind a restrictive CG NAT or a double NAT scenario. There, there's scenarios in which it might be a little bit harder to establish a peer-to-peer -peer connection. In those scenarios, having a failover machine provides an automated way to relay those connections when they aren't working. So let's go ahead and try that out. All we have to do is click here to create a failover, and that's it. You'll notice when I click that, ingress status also gets turned on. This is a convenience for us as the development team. So the way that a failover works is actually very similar to an ingress. It uses the same IP tables rules. It calculates its peers in very similar ways. And there's just some extra steps we add on to it to turn it into a failover machine. So enough about that. We still aren't doing anything special here because we have that peer-to-peer -peer connection with everything. There's nothing to fail over at this point. But let's go ahead and make this machine unreachable. So to do that, I'm going to go over to where it's hosted in DigitalOcean and I'm going to apply this firewall rule. This firewall rule says that all inbound and outbound is allowed but only to the NetMaker server. So all other connections are going to be denied. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that to our droplet. So there it is. Oop. Sometimes this goes a little slower than I'd like, but there we go. Adding it. And so that rule is now there, and it's updating the firewall. It says it's up to date, so let's go ahead and test that. OK, so as you can see, it is now unreachable. So if we take a look. Yeah, it's no longer reachable. Now, a series of events has to happen in order for this to start failing over. Metrics get sent every minute. And when we send the metrics, we send whether it is connected or disconnected. And actually, you're seeing it appears to have already happened. Um, so take a look at how these peers look here. We have three. And now let's show that interface again. We now only have two peers, and we see that allowed IPs got moved over to our failover server. So what's happening now is we are pinging it, and it's going via the failover server. So when our machine sent metrics to the server, it said, hey, I'm not connecting to this other instance. Uh, I don't know what to do. And then the server says, OK, we've got this failover machine. Let's use that. So this could take up to three minutes to work. It doesn't normally happen that fast. Um, 
so the keep the way that we calculate this is we check the latest handshake if it's older than two minutes and there has been a check-in where there is a disconnected status that's when we fail it over because we don't want to do it all the time we only want to do it when we're sure it's broken so it could take up to maybe three minutes to reestablish that and so yeah that's really all it is there are some extra notes on this so you can create multiple failovers we could for instance turn node 4 into a failover machine and then the server will calculate the fastest failover so it'll find the best relay server to use to relay that connection and then another note is how does this stop working so basically in order to stop a relay that can happen on a connect disconnect or on a net client pull so if i run sudo net client pull it'll reset that connection and it will no longer be relayed well not in this case obviously but generally i think it's actually on a net client connect disconnect If I disconnect and then connect, okay, there we go. So I had it wrong. Not on a pole, but on a connector, a disconnect. Um, so basically, it'll refresh that every once in a while. And if you send a node update, that will also be a scenario in which it will reset. So again, it's not connecting, and then it'll take another minute or two to reestablish that. So that's basically it. That's how failover works. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And otherwise, I will see you next time.